Well, good morning. I'm Newell Einerich, uh, the mayor of Danville. For just a little bit longer, um, I've had this opportunity as I'm looking at our former colleague, uh, Supervisor Candace Anderson. I've been, I've been mayor for a year and a half because, as you know, um, about last July 1st or June 30th. June, June 26th. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Do we know that specific date? That was an important date where uh, last year Candace was appointed to fill that seat after winning the election. So we are delighted to be here today. Um, we're joined with um, our newest council member, Renee Morgan, that's here, our vice mayor, who will in theory, be mayor, in theory. I need two more votes. Yeah, you need two more votes uh, at December. So I do want to make sure that, you know, the first Tuesday in December is always our annual community awards and installation, mayor's installation. Uh, this year will be a really um, a, a large uh, awards event uh, as we're doing the architectural awards, be looking at a variety of categories of recognizing uh, some civic facilities. This building's being considered for an award historic structures um, and um, kind of the, the things that we find in our community that make us a better community and celebrating those individuals um, and groups that um, are part of the fabric here. So that'll be an exciting event. So um, this morning we wanted to uh, spend a little bit of time, uh, give you an update since we're doing this quarterly, and talk about what um, what has kind of happened in the last three months, and then look forward a little bit, and we're gonna have a little special window into um, recreation, um, and, and a little hint, Danville never planned to get into the recreation business. We actually had a third party, private organization that we helped pay for, and they've been running recreation services for many years, and we started off as a limited service city, and we all of a sudden found ourselves going more and more into that program and found a way to um, figure out how to pay for it and make it work. And now we have one of the most robust um, recreation programs with literally thousands and thousands of people. And it serves kind of Alamo, the unincorporated areas, and uh, obviously uh, Danville as well. So Henry's going to give us an update. Um, one of the first things I want to do, um, La Boulange, um, here in Danville, I think this was the third or fourth store that they had opened. Um, and Nat here was talking about, um, you know, finding uh, one of our local businesses to help us in um, the mornings with the mayor. And they said, oh, we'll take care of that. So we really want to make sure that we do thank uh, La Boulange for bringing us, you know, every single day that those pastries are baked um, for coffee and beverages. Um, and uh, we really appreciate that. And they were here earlier, um, and they dropped off a special little box of their cookies. And if you've never had their, um, I'm forgetting the name. Macaroons. Their macaroons. <laughs> 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 actually, Candace supervisor is going to take the box if there's a no. <laughs> so this is sort of just a little bit of highlights. We're going to go through capital projects. We're going to talk about um, some development, some really exciting things. If you like the leisure services we have here about dining and shopping, wait till I tell you about what's coming. And um, then uh, Henry, as I said, is going to give a little update on uh, uh, recreation and then kind of go around the table and talk to some of our community partners about what's happening in their world. So when we start off um, the summertime, we have basically about 75 days between school and Sometimes we have to spend a million, maybe we have about a three and a half, four million dollar a year program, depending upon what we're doing that year, on repairing streets. What we try to avoid doing is to do too much of that work that will disrupt during the school year. Um, as you know, a lot of our, our schools are neighborhood schools, so impacting those schools by any road project could be um, uh, pretty severe. So we've had to rush to try to get through um, and get as many of those projects done during the summer. And this year we did almost 50% more than we had in the past. Um, and also just to highlight, um, this project here, this is sort of a before and after. This is Danville South Park on Camino Ramon um, as you're headed towards San Ramon. That's what it used to look like and that's what it looks like today. And this is a park that's been there since 1971. It was built as part of the Danville South development. And 1982 when we incorporated, um, this became part of uh, Danville's responsibility for maintenance. 
but it's a part that kind of you didn't see because it had high walls around there, and the neighborhood came to us, Robert Storer lives over there, and, and said, gee, Robert, can't we do something different here? It just doesn't look like Danville. Some concerns at night and things like that. And lo and behold, we go in and we open up the park. We do, do some physical improvements around the restrooms, some play activities, put in kind of the split rail look that looks like the rest of Danville Parks, and it looks like a brand new park. Um, and you can see now that there are people lined up on both sides. And one of the things when we did the opening this week is that neighbors, there are three neighborhoods that tie that together, that they all now see each other because they visually can see each other. They, they get there, they can see so-and-sos with the children there. They bring the kids out. So one of those wonderful things. Uh, one of the other um, interesting things, this is a picture of the Betts Hall, uh, Betts Hall, the uh, town meeting hall. We are going to finally start broadcasting our council meetings. And maybe one day we'll get to doing all of our commission meetings. And the concept of trying to make um, our government here local more accessible to people, they'll be tape delayed, um, hard to broadcast live. Uh, but we'll do that. And you'll be able to watch a council meeting on your iPhone, your smartphone, on your computer at home. So most of the infrastructure is installed. The cameras and stuff are coming. And so we're going to experiment it. And um, you know, it's not going to be the Academy Awards. In fact, it will never show up there. It will be something that you'll get to look. You can see what's happening in your community, hear the discussion, um, and have a better understanding other than just reading documents and report. <laughs> But if you also go there, we have a new sound system, we have new displays, so you can kind of see there's flat screens for the audience, so if you walk in, if you're in the lobby, you'll know where we're at on the agenda, it's displayed in there. Um, and uh, again, a much better improved sound system and also all of the microphones, everything has been done. Um, there was one uh, thing that's kind of hidden there, it says centralized irrigation. We spend 800 to a million dollars a year on water. Um, that's, a, that's a big water bill. Um, anything we can do to help reduce that. Um, and um, we have a new um, computer control centralized irrigation system and we've been trying to tie all of our parks in. And the ability, instead of sending somebody out to check on it, you can get information back on what's happening out there, control the timing, know if there's a break or a leakage or a seepage and things much faster. And you can imagine if a um, two inch water line breaks and it bleeds away in a park, um, the water alone, that could be a thousand dollars. We don't think about water, we just take for granted because, um, but those water bills are just like PG&E costs. They're going to continue as we conserve more, in theory, their capital costs and their maintenance costs is the same, so they're gonna charge more per gallon. So we have to be much more conscientious of that. So we're really pleased. That's an expensive investment but it's a good long-term investment that will have great returns for us. Um, upcoming, um, you know, sort of the capital improvement plan, this is Osage Park. Um, one of the things we're doing is we're reaching out to the community through a different way to get input from all of you. And I'll show you in one of the apps that we're using now, but there'll be electronic surveys going out now on a system where you can actually Tell us what you're thinking. We'll post some ideas about the park, about options, and kind of do some polling out there about what, what do we think we want to see in these parks and what are those kinds of changes. Um, downtown, we've had, um, and, and haven't really heard from most people, but on Hearts Avenue, um, I think here in Prospect in Old Town, we switched out the lights from the sodium vapor, which are the kind of yellowy looking lights, to LEDs. Now, we had done that on Sycamore, and those were very bright. We heard from a lot of folks, boy, it's different, it's brighter, and you know, there was pluses and minuses. But the fact is we've gotten used to it. Well, downtown, we spent a lot of time, Candace was um, here, we walked night after night looking at different lights until we finally said, oh, we like that look, because we were concerned about how it changed the look downtown and that feel. So we're gonna continue that, and um, probably one of the projects we are most excited and I say this, that my hair was brown, and I had a lot of it when we thought about this idea two decades ago. We've been trying to fix north end of town. That's kind of um, uh, Linda Mesa going down the high school on Hearts Avenue. And through some right-of-way acquisition and through some, some cooperation, the town ended up buying to our redevelopment agency. We bought one of the buildings to acquire property. 
We're now going to do the street improvements. So we're going to be it's kind of narrowing up the pathway, cleaning up the edges, putting the brick pavers down, redoing curb gutter and sidewalks, putting in the old-fashioned lights that look like that in trees. And one of the, the, the things that, um, a nice benefit that's coming along with that is that there are a lot of properties that have turned over, some new ownership. So we're looking at also coming forward of changing some of the zoning on the west side of that street to help encourage over a short period of time some of that new investment get people to remodel those buildings, hopefully repurpose those. And as we get further in this, I'll show you some exciting new businesses that are moving in. And I think that's gonna continually drive. Um, there's still paving projects to be done. These are more major ones. Um, the Sycamore Creek Trail, this is a large project to um, get the improvements done on their permanent surface. Um, so kind of exciting things, our capital improvement um, can go from three million to seven million dollars a year. Um, as you know, we either do it by grants or we do it by saving our money. So while we have projects on the list, we haven't gotten to. Those projects sometimes we're waiting for the funding as we, we add money to our capital improvements. Um, also, it's sort of a pace. We can only do so many projects without impacting the whole uh, community. So uh, just like for this building, it took us three or four years to plan it to save the money, it took a few years to build it. Um, it takes patience, but I think the things that we do, we do it carefully with a lot of community input. So if you've had a project that you may have had an interest in, you know, you can always join us in the spring and the month of May when we go through our um, um, budgets, we go through the capital plan, you can see how we prioritize those. And we prioritize it based on need, community input, council input, staff input, how is it gonna balance some projects we have to do because it's maintenance? How do we balance getting new projects in there? So I invite you, um, and who knows, maybe one day, one day, we might even have that televised in some way for those discussions. Um, but that's way beyond our capacity to do anything like that now. This is the cool thing. So Danville Connect, I don't know how many of you have this, but this application is free and it's literal. Connect you with the town of Danville is what it means. You can connect to the council. Um, you have, um, I know you're not gonna be able to see this on the screen, but on the, the right hand side there where it says Danville, that's what pops up. So you have new issues, track issues, town website, Danville today about information or the town council. So you can touch once. You'll pop up what's in the middle here under the Danville Connect there. That's, you fill out a form once about who you are, address, um, your email address. Once you do that, you're in the system. You could go up, take your uh, smartphone, you can see a street light out, take a picture of the light, tap, issue, touch light, sends an email, you'll get an email back saying, we got it, we know where it is. That photograph keeps GPS tracking on it. So make sure you have, it'll ask you to turn on your locator. We're not trying to track you. We want to know where they are. So the other thing is, is you'll notice our, our sprinkler systems run at night, right? More efficient, less evaporation. Um, if they you see a sprinkler line blowing straight up in the street and you take a picture of it, it'll give our um, maintenance staff the location of that. Even though you might describe it, they can actually use their smartphone and go find it. So this is a really cool connection. I think you're gonna see this evolve into other ways to communicate. This might be the way we'll use this app to reach out to say, what do you think about this? Um, or that we have a public meeting coming up, here's an application. So there's a lot of ways to do that. But right now, you know, I encourage you to try it. Um, you know, we've been testing it quietly for the past couple of months. I even got Caltrans through the town of Danville to fix something that isn't our problem, but our system helped uh, make that connection. So, you can connect, so I encourage you to try it and use it. Um, and again, it's free and it's, there's no instructions. You know, you, as long as you can read, that's all you have to do. And it's as simple, that is all the information you fill out. You fill that out um, really once how to do it. Um, actually, that's probably the problem page. But there's a page you do once, you never have to fill that out again. So um, look forward to having you uh, take a look at that. So everybody wants to know what's going on with the Danville Hotel. So, this is the absolute latest, um, and it's good news. And the good news is, um, 
you know, you need a, a building permit. So the actual construction plans by, put together by the architects and the engineering team, uh, it's a complicated site uh, that's taken a while. So those were plans were submitted uh, last month. They've been through plan check. They're going back for some corrections and things like that. They're getting ready. The good news is they're going to be pulling a demolition permit. And I know somebody says we'll pull the permit before it falls down. Um, as you know, remember the IRS, that's the Internal Revenue Service, owned all their property for more than a decade through a bankruptcy. And we were very fortunate that two local families were able to come in and buy that property. It was really dilapidated when they took it over. And the realization was that it needed to be um, refurbished. There's two historical buildings um, that um, were both built in the early 1890s when the railroad came. So those buildings will be preserved. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to bring those back to look like, as you see other buildings that have been done in town, to bring them back to what they really were in their heyday. And the, most of the other structures were temporary structures um, or structures built um, in the 60s. Those are coming down. So those tenants are all moving out. Um, the restaurant that's in there will move out January 8th. They're moving, by the way, over to Railroad Avenue into the new building. Um, that's just off of Linda Mesa. So, so we're excited to see a, uh, an existing, well-established business go into that new property. The property right next door to that on Railroad and Linda Mesa is coming in for a historic project um, to redo that and do something similar that's, um, that was just done next door. So we look forward to that. But this is going to be a, um, um, an exciting project. This is kind of just a, a footprint of it. Um, the horizontal on the bottom is railroad, on the left hand side is prospect, and of course on the top is Hearts Avenue. So there will be, on the lower left, there's two indoor outdoor restaurants up there, maybe still a restaurant back over in Hearts Avenue, maybe uh, uh, where the restaurant is now. But a courtyard that goes through there, and from the outside it will look like um, a typical two-story building with historical overtones. The architecture of it has been studied more than anything I've ever seen in the town of Danville. And I've been volunteering here for 24 years. We've had a lot of um, look at this, an opportunity to make those changes, and again, the preservation of the historic structures um, is going to take longer to do. Um, there was a couple of additions that were put on the old, the real Danville Hotel and Arch. Those are going to be removed, and they're going to restore the building. So you'll be able to walk around those buildings innkeeper house where Shopaholic was, and be able to see what, what did they really look like and what did they feel like. And the hope is, is no different than the Padua Shuey house um, that Brandon Development owns, uh, the Victorian at the corner of Church and Hearts. We all remember what that used to look like, what it looks like today, it's unbelievably beautiful. So we think that that's what we'll see and that's the vision for that. So, when will it open? It'll take from, uh, from January, it'll take about a year and a half. Um, to build that. Um, so you'll see the fences going up here pretty shortly. Demolition in the next few weeks will begin on um, particularly those temporary structures that were on. Um, and I say temporary structures, there's a not, another story we'll tell one day about why they were temporary structures. They were really weren't buildings. They put facades on them. They drug them over to the property one day and put these up way before we were incorporated. So. Um, anyway, some interesting things, uh, again, when we see the, one of the things is, what color should the Danville Hotel be? It, everybody believes it's red and white. That's not the original color, but it's become such an icon that that was one of the controversies, and it's still not quite decided. It's not holding the project up, but what color should that be? Um, good morning, Tina. <laughs> Um, so, just, just a little update, we showed this last time, our wayfinding is still on the way, that's been out to bid, um, and we're looking for that to start, and we really expect that to be in the spring, um, to see this, and it'll be kind of nice that hopefully as the north end of town, all of our wayfinding signage uh, will begin to happen. So that's a little bit more of that old town character that's going to add to the flavor um, in the downtown. Upcoming events, the Run for Education aka formerly known as Primo's Run, um, is coming up here um, in a couple of weeks. Um, Spirit of Danville, um, the 100 year celebration of the Village Theater. Um, last night it was a wonderful event. On Thursday nights, it's Thursday at the BT, the Village Theater. Um, a local band called Naked Soul, um, 
mistress. Alma the desnuda. Entire Alma desnuda. Alma desnuda, Naked Soul, debuted on their third album last night that they just released. Um, and this is music that appeals to all ages. Um, and they even had groupies. And the groupies went from about 18 to about 55 or 60. So, I mean, that shows you kind of how they were all dancing in the aisles and on the side and things. Um, really fun. But we're going to have an event on November 16th celebrating 100 years of Village Theater. Now, when it started, it was the Grange Hall, built in the 1870s. That portion of the building is 100 years old, and it's had a lot of remodels. So we're breaking up a little historical visual, audio, and maybe interactive um, history. It's about an hour and a half long program with about a half hour of discussion. How did it come to be? So a group of us have each taken part of that history. Um, you'll have a seat, and there'll be reception in the front, um, and it will be a wonderful show. So don't miss it. Um, on uh, November 16th. And of course, um, all of the, the other great things um, with uh, the spirit of Danville, one of our um, kind of traditions that come around, fun ways to celebrate shopping and dining in Danville um, in the holiday spirit, um, along with, um, of course, the Fall Fest uh, coming up on the 26th, 27th of October. Um, a really great event, and we all hope the weather will be great. We have a couple of little rains here. Um, so exciting things coming, uh, run for education, so the half marathon starts um, next to Primo's, um, ends up in San Ramon, the 5K, 10K is, um, actually, there is, is there a 10K, Terry? No, there's a 5K. 5K, that's good. Mm -hmm. I don't have no reason I have to uh, mm -hmm. do that. So the 5K you want to run it start. twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so anyway, some really, really great events, and of course the lighting of the tree, uh, probably one of Danville's, um, I think, most cherished events when you have now have about five, four or five generations. Um, we have commissioners who up here, their kids now go to this. They went there as children. Um, some really wonderful events. And of course, we talked about it. December 3rd is our um, annual community uh, awards. And of course, that's the vice mayor practicing to be the mayor. So <laughs> he looks good. You look like you uh, look like you're doing it right. And uh, uh, but I hope you'll please join us to find out. And if you have recommendations, by the way, of people or organizations that you think should be recognized for the things that they've done in the community to make this a better place, to make it a place that you want to live, please let one of us know. And you can use Danville Connect. Just touch council, whoever you want to send it to. Um, and we'll get it. We're going to be meeting uh, here coming up at a uh, study session to talk about um, those and who are worthy of them. Again, the Danville Award is one of those. We don't always give it out, but it's something that we give to a person or a group who have, who have done a commitment to our community over a long period of time. So we look forward to that. So now I'd like to uh, take a break here um, and introduce Henry and talk about um, what's going on in our recreation. This is um, if you don't participate in it, you kind of see it. If you're part of it, you're overwhelmed by the number of offerings and the things and the facilities now that we have at our, um, our ability to uh, provide these uh, recreation and community activities. So Henry, you want to give us an update? Thank you, Mary. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is my opportunity, and anytime I can, I will speak about recreation and kind of share what's been going on. I think what I really wanted to focus on, kind of give you an idea of what we just went through. We just went through our summer season, and in our summer season is probably our busiest season, although we do stuff all year round. And in particular, this is just the, the month of September is a time where we take a small breath before we just charge into the rest of the stuff. Um, something I thought would be important to know is when we do our programming, we do have a mission for recreation, which includes strengthening community image and sense of place, strengthening the safety and security, uh, facilitating community problem solving, uh, protecting environmental resources, providing recreational experiences, supporting economic development, promoting health and wellness, also increasing cultural unity and fostering human development. Along with that mission, there's also the, the uh, statewide brand of Parks Make Life Better, which allows for folks to recognize that parks and recreation make lives and communities better you know, today and forever. And we do that through uh, providing access to nature, outdoor and open space play, exercise, free time fun and positive spaces, socializing and, and 
really utilizing our gathering places like this one right here. Um, throughout, the, throughout the summer season, one of the things you may have seen, and hopefully you've attended one of these and had the opportunity to do so. If not, it's coming back again, so you'll have that opportunity. Uh, the town actually had our Moonlight Movie Series on the town green where we had the opportunity to have families and folks come out there and watch movies outside. So we had a blast with that. We had a couple of thematic nights. There was a night where we had a Harry Potter movie. And with our staff there, we also offered different games that were kind of thematic to Harry Potter. I think one of our biggest movie nights, though, was the movie Up. It was a very emotional uh, movie, very family friendly, and we had that, it was like a sea of family that was just there out there, and we enjoyed seeing that. It was kind of fun to go out there and just see how people enjoy just being together as a community and being out there. We also, as a recreation department, want to make sure that we are involved with the community outside our own program. The Thursday Night Street Festival that was out here, we also had a table. So one of the things that we wanted to do is make sure that folks knew that we were there and who we were. So it wasn't just about having a table of information, but we also had some arts and crafts that the kids can do in a couple of games out there. So we wanted uh, to make sure that people understood what information they were getting and what they would get from that. One of the things you see, there's a picture up there and I also brought one in here. This is our new um, look of our recreation activity guide. For, for Danville. If you take a look at it, what you'll hopefully see is what we're hoping everybody sees. It's an easy to read, kind of easy to follow uh, recreation guide. We, uh, through, our, through our staff and some folks that were able to critique our guide, some profession, this professional organization called LEARN, we recognized there were a few things that we needed to tweak a little bit to make it a little easier for folks to use. So if you haven't seen this one, I encourage you to please take a look at it. I think it's been in your mailbox. Um, but again, it's easy to read, easy to find. Our senior programs it's that are housed right here, they are very busy. We try to continually offer uh, programs and services for them that just make them happy and, and let them have uh, lifelong learning uh, opportunities. They were able to go, uh, their senior sinker trips, they were able to go to the USS Potomac as a tour there, that, which served as a presidential yacht for uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt. So they were able to see that. They were also uh, able to, throughout this summer, tour the rooftops of San Francisco. That, from all the feedback I got, that was one of the, their favorite trips over the summer. They also, we provide, uh, they, we had our annual barbecue and bocce, that, uh, which was a great bocce. time over. It's bocce. 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 Uh, that event was, uh, and barbecue, uh, that's, or BBQ. So that was at Sycamore Valley Park, and that was, that was well attended, and they had a great, great time of that as well. Um, when we're talking about our cultural arts program, uh, this, uh, if you haven't seen our new brochure for 2013-14, uh, this is out and available, and actually I saw a few of them right out here, so if you're leaving, you want to grab that. For, a, for all the theater events that are going on throughout the town, through, at the Village Theater, one of the things that's uh, pretty fun about this one that we enjoyed is we, we partnered with our economic development folks. We have a listing of uh, restaurant guides there as well. So you only take, you know where the shows are, you know where the restaurants are, you can go ahead and, and we partner with some of the restaurants to have a little bit of a discount on a ticket Special. or specials that will be going on through those shows. So take that opportunity to kind of utilize that as well. Also with our Culture Arts Fund, we had the uh, 28th Annual Music in the Park Series. This year what we got to do, and that was it's typically out at Oak Hill Park this year, we actually had one of them here on the town green. Got a lot of great positive feedback from the folks that live locally to, uh, to downtown. They were able to walk, ride their bikes, so that is something again that we will continue as a recreation department to continue to look at to, to offer for the, for the town. Also, just one thing, even though it might be a smaller area, there are no geese or ducks in the town green. <laughs> something to think about if you're voting on what you want to tell us, we're the best place to have it, something to consider. So, and now on the same side, it's like you see the smaller venue here, but then when you also go to Oak Hill Park, you just see a sea of people, even though there's some geese, geese there as well, you'll have them uh, interact with you. But that, that was a fantastic uh, venue as well to have our, our, our um, music in the park out there. We also, through um, our facilities management folks, the folks that rent our, our uh, facilities, or take care of our buildings. We actually had about 14 weddings at various facilities this, this summer alone, and then 261 picnic rentals. So it, we were pretty active with our facilities. Um, also, the summertime is the sports and fitness time. We had our adult sports program that went on with adult softball, adult uh, bochi was also going on there, both eight-week sessions over at Sycamore Valley Park. This year, also, uh, we were able to utilize the uh, San Ramon uh, High School Pool, Valley High School pool uh, for our programs as well. One of the favorite programs came out from our seniors. They said the arthritis, uh, the arthritis aquatic program was actually filled to capacity throughout the summer, and they just enjoyed it. We've got rave reviews. I think I told the district at a meeting yesterday that the, the seniors could have it. They'd have it all year round, 
and they would love to, uh, love to kind of continue to have that program. Also our aquatics program, one of the things that we, we train our staff to do, uh, to know what they're doing as far as lifeguards. They also internally as a staff are proud about what they do and their skills. They enter two teams into the Bay Area um, lifeguard games where both teams actually placed in first in two different, uh, two different uh, elements. One was a spinal injury management and the other one placed first in the rescue relay. So that was kind of fun for us. And these folks are generally high school students, high school to early college years, who are working here for the town, local kids from, from Danville and the San Ramon Valley. So it was great to have them represent us this year and actually come back with some first place, uh, first place trophies there. And then also for the summer, the biggest thing, our youth and teens, they have uh, the camps that we, that we offer everywhere from our Little Peanuts camp, which had some great uh, thematic things like going on a bear hunt or the Herald the Purple Crayon. I don't know if anyone remembers that from their kids or the things that go on with that. That was some fun uh, camps that, that happened this summer. We also offered a new class. Uh, it was an adaptive hip hop class that uh, went through for a couple of sessions, which we were excited to have. The other thing that was exciting for us is we were able to utilize some of our residents as well as guest speakers for our camps. Uh, during our Great Outdoors Week, and one of the Danville residents, Captain John Hartman from the San Leander Fire Department came in and kind of spoke about how uh, outdoor fire safety with the kids. So we were having a connection with our residents as well as you know getting them some learning during the summer. They didn't even know it. Um, also in August at the end, we had about nine teens go on a class two or three river rafting trip. And they had a blast. They love going down. It's again trying to get teens and or uh, young adults to have a good experience through recreation. And this is one of the things that they got to do. Last thing too, in July uh, we held a couple of um, family campouts. One at Oak Hill Park, and then one also at Mount Diablo. About a total of 180 families participated in those two activities. So we were really excited to have them. And kind of for some, first time camping, first time outdoors. And it's a great venue to be able to do that at Oak Hill Park. And then also, because you get to feel the wildlife right there with the, uh, with the geese and the duck. So, but um, <laughs> then we also get the, the, real, the real critters out at Mont Diablo. So we had a good time. And then a couple of things like, like, like the mayor had mentioned, some things that are upcoming for us right now is the Village Theater celebration. We do invite you, we'd love for you to come out there. And then also some of our art gallery exhibitions, which is one's gonna be opening up October 11th. The Athenian High School students capture life in Cambodia and Vietnam. So we welcome you and we thank you guys for participating in our programs. And if you haven't yet, come on down. We'll have you, we'll have you play. So thank you. Great. Henry, thank you. <laughs> Exciting. And by the way, that's uh, when you look at the activity guides that we do mail, but you can go online. All of that's there. All the registration, it's easy to do, it's an online. Um, you do just fill out your name once, it keeps a record of who you are. Um, and how you sign up for those. Yes, Tina. Um, can we talk about how you distribute the information so that people get it and how we can do it better? As far as the, Activities the, acti ac the activity guide information goes out in the mail to all the households in Danville. So that is one way that we do. We also utilize our press releases, our social media outlets to promote different classes or even to promote the recreation guide that comes out. Um, we do have items at each one of our locations. We have, we're at a four out of four locations as far as the, the department as a whole through the senior center here, community center, Oak Hill Park, as well as the Village Theater. So we have information at all those locations. And you can sign up for it electronically for so anything. So you're using Facebook a lot more. I suggest you have more activities uh, such as when the, the students won the awards. I never saw anything anywhere about the lifeguards winning that. That would have been kind of cool to just read about. I don't, I don't see the recreation department using Facebook, the downtown Facebook we have lots of, you know, we were just talking about, I, I remember the, the theory in uh, Berkeley. It was back in the late 60s and early 70s, Berkeley was, was, the, was the place on earth where you put a poster on. Well, then one day there were a thousand posters, and then there were 10,000 posters. And in fact, nobody noticed them. It just became the background. One of the things, we put out so much information now, what we, what we find is, is we have to be careful of how much we put out if we push all the information out, the problem is we find people that say, oh, I didn't notice that. Well, that's because we sent them 12 emails. So we're looking for a different variety of ways. So our Danville Connect, you're going to see more ways that you can connect up to get the information that you want versus us just pushing everything out. So you're well, right. But I would like to say that the seniors, at least recently, I've got more senior-oriented email 
so that I, I it's your demographic that you and I have fallen yeah. into. <laughs> yes, we definitely. do keep track and of that. And uh, I appreciate that because yeah. I think that sometimes, you know, we, and, and the other thing I see is that a lot of people, at least the seniors sign up for things, you know, on the activity guide three, two months before it happens, and then they don't write on the calendar, they don't show up. So a lot of the activities that they sign up for, they don't come, if they could just be emailed a day or two ahead of time, because you've got their information because they've registered, if they could just be that remember, you signed up for da da da. I think his attendance would be much higher. So a reminder, you know, hey, class starts for seniors at least. We look forward yeah, for the seniors. Our other classes are problems we have to turn away people. Right. Yeah, because we're well, so limited. Yeah, well, I think they'll fold too, but they don't remember to come, and then you have to have people there. We appreciate that. Thank you, Tina. So I wanted to take. We've got uh, about 15, 16 minutes left. I want to go around um, with our community partners and let each. Um, um, one of our partners and people involved here tell us a little bit of what's happening in their world. We'll start off with uh, Supervisor Candace Sanders. Well, anything and, and you want to share? There I am on the screen. Isn't too? that yeah. nice? <laughs> yes. oh, very honored. Yeah. Now, you know, the nice thing is, as county supervisor, you partner with each of the cities over which you, um, which with, within your district. And so, yesterday, <coughs> Newell and I, with Mayor Clarkson and Sandra Mullen, were launching our Street Smarts traffic safety program along with Terry as well and one thing we're doing to respond to a horrible tragedy that I know you're all aware of in Danville where we lost a young man the day before school started CHP has a terrific program called smart start which is tailored toward high school students and so we will be rolling that out in our school the nice thing about street smarts is we don't want to reinvent the wheel we love to partner with other programs in place so that's something, a terrific community response we're all working on together. Um, Newell and I also serve on the Central Contra Costa Solid Waste Authority, which is your garbage recycling pickup. And we are in the process of doing two really interesting things there. One, we are going out for new franchise agreements. So in another year from now, you may have different carts, different providers, and that's gonna be next month, we are actually interviewing various companies that would like to be the providers for all of Central Contra Costa, and we are also hiring a new executive director. And then serving on County Connection, which I serve with Robert, <coughs> something we're rolling out in January is free senior riding of buses between 10 and 2 p.m. Something we wanna do is keep seniors as active, as independent as possible, and you don't have to have a bus pass, you don't have to have a special ID, just between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. seniors will be <coughs> allowed to ride for free any of our county connection buses. So we're looking forward to that. Um, fire, although, do we have anyone from San Ramon Valley yeah, Fire? Actually, Chief Paige Meyer emailed us out late yesterday. He could not make today's meeting. Okay, well, and they're, sure. they are such a valuable partner. As we saw with the, the Morgan Fire, the Mount Diablo Fire, I think all of us who woke up <laughs> that, that Monday morning and saw Mount Diablo ablaze. I mean, just great, great accolades for Chief Meyer and his, his squads, the crews that were right up there on Summit Road who were protecting the structures of Mount Diablo. And it's all of our fire agencies work very cooperatively. And in my district, I have Moraga Rinda Fire Protection District, and then the Board of Supervisors serves as Contra Costa Fire Protection District board of directors and we are in the process we've just hired a new chief we're going through a very extensive study of how we provide services because con fire is not is in good financial condition a san ramon valley fire and we're working at some of those issues and the reason it affects us in the san ramon valley is that we rely so heavily as we did in the morgan fire on both auto aid and mutual aid and so we're doing some really great things cooperatively as a county. The county's doing great. We've got you know our, our 8,000 employees and 20 different labor groups, and some of them ready to go on strike because we're only offering them a 2% raise for the next two years. But we're right now we have a structurally balanced budget, and because we did lower our rate of return to a more appropriate number, um, we do have $55 million in increased expenses next year. That's just added on, and so we're looking for ways to cut those, um, cut various expenses, save in various ways to make up that new gap, a very needed gap to fund our pensions, but nevertheless a big impact in the budget. Candace, thank you. And it, as Candace just pointing out, all the things that we uh, we cooperate together on, um, you know, Danville is still part of the county, um, as San Ramon, all the cities are. It's, it's really wonderful. 
Uh, Mary Pico, you know, had service before with the new district boundaries. Her district got moved out to uh, Tosahara Valley, and then with Candace in there, um, clearly we uh, we have her on speed dial, so it works really and, well. Um, and my office is just down the street. And her office always, is on Diablo, just the rest of the uh, just on behalf of Paige Meyer, though, too, Paige Meyer, um, and he, he had been here last time. You know, he started in the spring um, with San Manuel Valley Fire Protection District. And just to his credit and to the credit of the fire, um, the firefighters themselves, Candace mentioned Con Fire, Contra Costa Fire, the financial troubles. You know, and this district had troubles in a different way. And um, Paige Meyer came in and sat down with the employee group and said, we got to do something different. This is not financially um, sustainable. And after a month of going through to understand and accept where was the budget, where was it going to be, each firefighter took a $1,200 a month cut. Um, there's no other group around that I know that has done that significantly. And that they were part of the solution to help solve the problem. And I think um, a lot of credit goes to Paige Myers to Chief Price, who tried to get that done before he had uh, retired out, that it's pretty significant. It does, you know, government's reinventing itself in a lot of different ways, and I think we all should be proud that our fire district stepped up to figure out how to solve the problem so that 20 years from now, they'll still be here doing the same service at the same level. So, uh, Terry Caney from uh, San Juan Valley Unified School District. Terry, do you want to add anything about uh, what's going on in your world? Um, sure, we can uh, turn this into a lunch if you'd like. Because no. <laughs> <we're there's> a, <laughs> uh, two minutes. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for making my picture half the size of Candace for obvious reasons. Um, She's a little better looking. Absolutely, <laughs> no question about it. Um, just um, real, a quick reminder about the Run for Education. Um, it benefits the San Ramon Valley Education Foundation, which is a, a tremendous partner of the school district, provides supplemental funds, and we raise upwards around $300,000 on the run now, and there's 10,000 people that we're expecting. So it's one of the largest community activities in the San Ramon Valley now. We're very, very proud of that, of that run. So October 13th, put it on your calendar, register at srvef.org if you have a moment. Um, if you drive by Monta Vista and you look to your right and you see this new large structure in the middle of the campus, it is the Workday Student Center which is um, completely funded by um, Mr. Dave Duffield and Workday, <coughs> about a $20 million facility. I, I had the, uh, the pleasure of, of touring it yesterday. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's like a college campus student center slash library, a two-story two facility. Um, and we're going to have a grand opening coming up October, toward the end of October anyway. If you hear about it, please show up. It'll be open to the community. There's a huge outdoor um, jumbotron <laughs> screen, literally, with an outdoor quad area where the school intends to have like, you know, movie nights and things for the community and feeder schools. It's, it's, it's now, it's going to quickly become the, the hub of that school. It's, it's a tremendous facility. Um, Henry mentioned the new pool at San Ramon Valley High School, and we're very thrilled to, to open that up to the community. We're going to, uh, we're just putting the finishing touches on the entryway, and we're going to have a grand opening coming up in the next couple months for that as well. Um, you may start to hear some things about closed campus at San Ramon Valley High School. Um, we are feeling that, feeling that out. We're, we're going to have a forum for the community and for parents to to gain input um, about what they think we should do. Right now, it is only open, an open campus for seniors. So only seniors can go off campus during lunch right now. And we don't want to stray from that. The question is whether or not we're going to close the campus to seniors as well in the future. So that's what's sort of up in the air at the moment. Our district it continues to grow. Um, <coughs> without bragging we like to consider ourselves we call ourselves a destination district because we we truly do believe that people a large reason why they move here and they move their families here is, be, is because of the quality schools and we're, we're proud of that so we're up another 600 students over last year um, but with that comes challenges because we have space issues and um, when you are new to the school district and your first um, your first entree is oh by the way you're going to be diverted to your your next closest neighborhood school that's not a good way to start your, your children's education, but it is sort of the grim reality in, in a lot of ways. So um, 
you know, we continue to deal with that. And, and thanks to our, our taxpayers voting yes on Measure D last November, we have a lot of projects in, the, in design now, <coughs> including a new school in the Doherty Valley, which is going to help relieve the pressure out, out in East San Ramon. You probably have heard a little bit about the Common Core State Standards, which is sort of, well, not sort of, it is, it is the biggest shift in education in easily the last 20 to 30 years. And, and um, we're very excited about it. We think it's going to shift the way st uh, teachers teach, students learn. It's, gonna, it's going to um, alter standards from an inch deep, mile wide kind of approach to a much deeper um, way of, 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 um, of promoting teaching and learning. So we're very excited about that. And there's going to be two parent forums and community forums coming up, one at Monta Vista and then one at San Ramon, probably at California High School. So you can, you can look for that as well if you'd like to learn more about that. Candace talked a little bit about funding. Um, we are also, for the first time in six or seven years, um, going to be in the black. So it's exciting. Um, we've operated from a structural deficit for far too long, and so um, we'll, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> and and there's, a, there's a new formula. It's called the Local Control Funding Formula. And it's... Um, That's an oxymoron. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but anyway, if you'd like to learn more about that or want more information about that, just, just let me know, and I'm happy to pass on any information you'd like. Terry, thank you mm -hmm. for the update. We also have Emlyn, um, <laughs> Emlyn from Marcus Solonay's office. Emlyn, anything you want to, I know the legislator is, they're out, the governor's got a ton of bills sitting there, we're all waiting to see which ones make it and which ones don't. Any activities or anything you want to mention coming up? Uh, yes, so actually our mobile, or with the senator's mobile <coughs> open office hours will be in Danville on November 30th. So we're working with your staff to reserve two meeting rooms here at the Veterans building and that will be it's a Saturday November 30th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, so we'd love for you to join us great thank you and um, anybody here from Assemblywoman uh, John Buchanan's office no but I do see Jane is here from Congressman uh, George Miller Barb Johnson. Barb, Barb, when I say Jane. <laughs> okay. Looking too far away. Barb, welcome. Good morning. Um, George is back in Washington um, trying to keep uh, the government running. Um, there, the debate's going on now, um, whether it's health care or our government, or whether we can come to agreement on both. So one of the things that we're doing with um, Senator DeSaulnier this coming weekend in Pittsburgh is a town hall on health care and health Covered California, the um, exchange that will be used, or marketplace that will be used to sign up for health care. And we'll be doing those around the district. So we'll be in Central County as well. First one's in Pittsburgh this Saturday at 9.30 at the Ambrose. <coughs> um, one of the things that I wanted to mention, George is a, a, a ranking member of Education and Workforce Committee. And you had mentioned about property values and what he has said for, for years and decades now is that if you wanna, if you're selling your house and you wanna improve your property values, you don't fix your kitchen and your bathroom. What you do is you fix your schools because people come for schools. So congratulations on all the work on, on your schools. It's, it's great. And um, our office is in Concord, but we are all around the district. So uh, let us know if you have any concerns on the federal level. Great. Barb, thank you for being here. Um, Chief Simpkins, do you have anything you want to uh, mention about what's happening around here? Well, uh, our partnership with Terry is probably taking up our summer. We had uh, a few good things happen this summer. We did some training at uh, Charlotte Wood School to uh, prepare us for emergencies should they ever happen, uh, which was a, a lot of fun. Terry uh, wouldn't let me shoot him with our simunition rounds. We, we tried to negotiate <laughs> that, but it just didn't work out. Uh, but we did uh, have some good training with uh, both the school district and our, our Maybe staff. we can make that a fundraiser. Yeah, I think we go. Like a dunk tank. It's like a dunk tank, right? Yeah. Step up and only with guns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we also uh, helped uh, welcome the students back in for the first day of school. Uh, we had a sworn officer posted at all of our schools to help ease the traffic, because I, I think all of you know that uh, traffic at schools is uh, tough to begin with, but on the first day, when everybody wants to welcome their uh, children to school, we like to make it a nice, safe day. 
uh, and things are looking good. Our, uh, our current crime trends are pretty similar to what they were last year. We don't have any significance, uh, either uh, drops or raises in either Which direction. Which means they're low to begin with, and they're staying low. Exactly. That's they're they're saying. they're following a uh, <coughs> decade long trend of a of a decline. Yeah. So that's great. Uh, very good. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Discover Discover Dan Builder. What's uh, we mentioned a couple of things. What else is happening? Uh, last but most importantly, Discover Danville Association is your group that unites everyone here, the students, the kids, the seniors, and the town. Um, we're the nonprofit that partners with the town's economic uh, planning and development to host all the events that stimulate shop, dine, play, our, um, the local campaign since we met last. Um, Newell, we hosted the town's Thursday night street festivals, complete with the fundraising dunk tank. Um, the uh, art and wine stroll, the Heartland Danville Antique and Art Fair, and moving forward, um, next weekend we're hosting a Tinsel and Treasure of Folk Art show here inside the Vets Hall. It's being um, put on to promote the facility and the town. It's an all-day program, open to everyone, $5 admission. Again, we're promoting um, Danville as a go-to location, and that's just the launch pad for the whole um, holiday season. Thank you, Newell, for mentioning Spirit of Danville, that pre-shopping uh, holiday extravaganza that unites our local businesses and our residents with our charities too because there's an important charity um, factor to show our spirit of giving and caring as well as the spirit of Danville. Great. Marshall Herman, thank you. And the name of your story is? Well, I just happen to <laughs> own Cottage Jewel yes. downtown <laughs> here. Marcia, I, I have to tell you, she needs a plug for that. Marcia has to close her store to do all these activities to help she helps all the other businesses, and oftentimes um, she doesn't always get the help. So, Marcia, thank you, thank you for everything that you do. We so really appreciate it. Um, anybody here from Rotary? Any announcements? Any other community service organizations want to make any announcements? Um, one quick one yeah, from um, my Rotary Club, which is Rotary Club of San Ramon, in conjunction with the Primos Run, is called the Auction for Education. Excuse me, it's not the Primos Run for anymore. I owe a dollar to the pot. It's the Run for Education and the Auction for Education, and bidding starts, it's an online auction, and bidding starts on October 1st, and there's tons of um, restaurants and golf and outings and cabins and things like that that you can bid on online, and not only you, but your, you know, great aunt's cousin Myrtle in Wisconsin can bid on them too, because it's all online, so again, go to uh, srvef.org and click on auction. Great, thank you. Joe Calabrigo, town manager. Joe, anything else you want to add to uh, what's happening in Dillon? Well, I think it's all been pretty well uh, covered, Mr. Mayor, so <laughs> I'll cede my time back to you. Marcia has one on, more thing. On behalf of the Chamber of Commerce um, for their upcoming Danville Fall Craft Festival, 26th, 27th, um, 26th 27th uh, of October, with the addition of expanded local artist and merchant booths along either end of Prospect. And um, they also are helping with the Bay Area News Group Danville page. So if you're not getting the newspaper, you should order it because every other Wednesday has a wonderful town-sponsored um, communication page. Great. Thank you. Look forward to that. And um, just going to wrap up. We're exactly at 8.30. This is an hour-long program. Uh, one, thank you for coming here. Let you know other community partners know. Um, we're going to also look at a format of maybe of doing, instead of having one of us always talking, inviting and doing a little more in-depth talk, either with one of our department heads, sort of like an interview. We'll sit here and do an interview about what's happening, how are things done, or if there's a subject matter that we want to talk about in detail, maybe as we reveal what's going to happen in, in one of our parks or a major plan change, we'll look to do that. So we'll be back here um, in December for the final quarter of this year. And I think actually, is that officially going to be the new mayor? So, might be. I need two more so, votes. Yeah, two more votes. <laughs> so, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and we'll ask you then how it worked out. Anyway, um, if, since we won't see you to then, we hope you'll enjoy some of these wonderful events. 
meet us uh, in October um, for the Billings Theater 100 year celebration, all the other great events that are happening here. Have a great holiday and we'll see you here in December. Thank you.